right? Further Islamic principles related to gender, there are two genders. In many verses in the Quran, we saw he created the male and the female. Um, there is this notion of an intersex person born physiologically with ambiguous gender. This has been known since time eternal. And the Sharia talks about that. This is not psychological gender dysphoria, which is different. Someone who has an unambiguously male or female body is considered by the Sharia to be a male or female, a man or a woman accordingly. So biological sex and psychological gender, you know, this distinction which came about in the 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s, this is not something that we as Muslims, you know, uh, would, uh, would, would run with, right? This idea that your biological sex and your psychological gender, okay, they might be disparate, but normatively they should be, they should line up. These are not free-floating variables. And we said this earlier, if you're male, have a male body, the norm is that you would actually identify as a man. Now, maybe you don't, that's gender dysphoria, that's gender identity disorder. We can deal with that, but it doesn't mean that there is no sort of normative connection between the physical body and the psychological gender, right? Now, something also very important, and this you know, is gonna be uncomfortable for many contemporary Muslims, especially in the West, deliberate imitation of the opposite sex is forbidden, specifically in dress and affectations. Um, and there's a famous hadith, which is narrated in several different variations, that uh, actually not God has cursed, but that, that the prophet said the prophet cursed men who deliberately imitate women and women who deliberately imitate men. Okay. Now, what does this mean, deliberately imitate? It's very important that we understand deliberately Im imitating because there can be men, and Islam is realistic, there can be men who are more effeminate by nature in their speech, in their, you know, um, mannerisms and the way they behave. There could be women who are kind of more masculine by nature. This is not what's being talked about here. It's the ones who deliberately imitate, who take on by design the characteristics that are known in a particular society to belong to the other sex. So the example early on with you, those drag queens that go into uh, school. Yeah, uh, drag uh, queen story hour, exactly. Really uh, <laughs> dressed up in the most outrageous uh, women's clothes. And that is very deliberate because it's completely unnatural. I mean, it's very artificial, but that, that would be right. an example of deliberately imitating women or, or a certain very crude and exaggerated uh, 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 imitation of women. I don't think any normal woman would look like that. But anyway, so that, that's exactly. a good example. Yeah, right. Right. And the idea is that you can always, you know, decide how you dress, right? You might not be able to control your gait or your mannerisms or your speech, uh, but, you know, you can always choose what to wear. And so actually, Al-Bukhari, one of the main hadith collectors, he put this hadith in the chapter on dress in his book. So, the, the, you know, this was understood as really, again, things that you can uh, consciously, um, uh, that you can consciously control.